As a home designer for the past 15 years, I've worked on many massive projects, both for television and for the residential and private market. In 2015, I decided to put my money where my mouth was and build a holiday home that we call a batch for my family. But with only 100 days to complete it, the block work is too wide to fit the fireplace. And with plenty of dramas, we're out of cleaning. Bloody hell. Just one more thing. But the pain was worth it. Well, we're done, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I'd definitely do this again. I love it. And now I'm going to help my friends Alex and Rachel attempt a massive renovation on a grand scale by gutting their 85-year-old home and adding a second story. I'd like it to stay pretty, obviously colonial. We're going to half destroy this house and take it back to its roots. That's complete open plan living. With a tight budget and only 100 days to build, this red ones will split and break yeah, well, down. That's what it's like inside there. There is no room for error. We're going to be at least another four weeks away from actually having our windows. But will the pressure be too much? 20 minutes, she went from fine to really sick. Welcome to the 100 day renovation. Alex and Rachel have discovered that when renovating, an 85-year-old home will always have issues. The existing power line that comes off the street to the house, probably illegal, so that's got to move. The thing is, really, it's going to be another sort of three and a half, maybe $5,000. It does feel a little bit like I'm kind of burning money. And with a delay from the council, Kelsey changed his plans and began demolishing downstairs, catching the family off guard. We have so much stuff. Once the cupboards were clear, Kelsey and Nathan began demolition. That's complete open plan living. We've got the master bedroom that opens directly into Max's bedroom. And the scaffolding was added to the exterior. I think if you're just driving past, you would almost think we're building an apartment block, <laughs> which might start a few rumours in the neighbourhood. And with Rapid protecting the house, Kelsey removed the roof. And the concrete for the footings was finally poured. They will be attached to steel beams to support the second story, which are due in just a few days. With Kelsey both demolishing rooms and finishing off concrete footings, it's important to have Alex on site as a project manager. But he's distracted, training for the upcoming marathon. Time theft, that's what I'm going to call it. Alex is going away and he's going to do a marathon. We're at the early stages of the renovation. At the moment, it seems like it just goes on forever. Uh, he's leaving Rachel in charge. She's very thorough. But more's the point, is this the point where someone should be left alone to do it again? <laughs> or is it the time that support needs to be there and, and, and things need to be nutted out and done together? This is him and it's his reno and it's his world. I just wonder if maybe he should have not done the run. With the renovation now starting to move quickly, Rachel, Alex and I need to settle on a design so that we can order the tiles and lights. Both Alex and Rachel want to restore the house to its original 1930s look, but I have chosen some current colours and patterns and I'm nervous about how they'll react. OK, so exterior colour of the house, grey, it's soft, it probably errs to a slight greenish tinge mm -hmm. rather than a brown or a blue, which we're ending mm. up cold. Now, for the window frames, you and I talked about a sharp white, crisp right? White. Crisp white. Yeah. We're going to use resin alabaster. Ooh, it nice. has a hint of grey, but yep. you can see the sharpness that's a nice now. That's contrast. Now you see the colour that's coming through. Alex, you'll be particularly excited at this point. Would that be gloss, full gloss? Full gloss, window frames. Um, Safit's front doors. You and I talked about front yeah, doors. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I've gone with a darker grey. I thought that was going to be something. Yes, <laughs> I think it gives it presence but doesn't glaringly jump out at you. Great. Uh, and also I want to do the shutters. How are we feeling? Love it. I, happy? It's great. Yeah, totally happy. Let's just do it. And now I'm going to keep the alabaster because we're going to also be tying the alabaster inside as our 
white inside. Now, I wanted a neutral, so upstairs... <laughs> it looks the same. Is that yes. different? No, okay. no. Different. There's, a, there's a massive difference. Oh, OK. Right, sorry. Design in the design world. Huge difference. difference. Triple C fog triple I went C with. Fog. Thought so, so. This is triple C fog in alabaster. So, things like the hallways, and if we end up painting any other walls in the house... Yes. One thought was to do the office all in the white wrap round. Yeah. But your bedroom, if Perhaps we want a bit to, softer. yeah, just to take the edge off it. Yeah. Yes. Macy's bedroom, she's all white because we yeah. are going to do the accents with the yes. lamps and yes. the bedding. So I think the hardest bit was Max's room. So you bought a jumper. I did. You jumped online and did that resine um, color match. That thing. was really useful. Yeah. Very useful. Yeah. Very easy to so do. So I've ordered those colors as drawdowns, which are just A4 cutouts oh, of right. the paint. <laughs> it's so funny. You order all these colours and it's like whites well, and neutrals turn up and greys. <laughs> and then these Shabam. turn up on wow. top. Right, okay. So these are the colours for Max's room. Hudakawa red, celestial blue. Love them. Yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. like them. Yeah. Now, good times ahead. Oh, yeah. Tiles. Yeah. Okay. You sent me the great pictures, Rach, yes. of patterns I like on the tiles. Now, tiles. I would like to have the same tile on the floor in all three bathrooms. Okay. I like a little bit of continuity there. Here we go. God. It's so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You sit there, allow me to delve into my bag. I'm fine. I, I know you'll do it fine. This is the fine. tile I would like to do fine. on the floor. So Ooh. it's not a sharp black and white, but nice. it gives it's it really now, nice. It's part of a pattern, but that is the end result pattern Lovely. we end up with on the floor. floor. It's kind of in keeping with an older house, I think it's got that feel to it. That it looks, is. Looks a little bit mm. vintage. It's, it's a right modern word. take on yeah. a vintage style. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with that? You've done well. We're happy well with the old <laughs> the Cementina. Yes, it's lovely. All right. You sent through a picture of an aquamarina kind of tile. Yes. And you were thinking of maybe for the main bathroom, yes. I would like to use it in Macy's. Because you know how nice. she likes her colour? That's nice. The aquamarine, so yeah. we can use that in her bathroom, which then sort of ties her bathroom yeah. through to um, the yes. inner bedroom. I think it'll work and it will be dazzling. Now, for the master bathroom, there's no window, so we want to keep it light, bright, but interesting. I'm going to go traditional because I like it, but oh, we're going to use a white brick tile but with a beveled with a edge bevel. to help reflect the light around the room. I really like the crisp That's white lovely. against this. Look and there's our alabaster you see for our ceiling and our doors. Oh, no. It's probably closer to what you were showing me for like your ensuite style yes. bathroom you're yeah. looking, but your ensuite's going to be a little bit different. <laughs> 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 okay. Where are we going? I'm waiting for the big, the big... Well, at least you know it works with this. Yeah, no, so far so oh, true. Okay. I want to do matte black walls, shower walls. Now, you might say, Hamish, black walls. But you've got to remember, there's also a window and um, there's a door and they're all painted white. As long as it's not going to look sort of gothic. No, no, no. <laughs> I think, if anything, it's going to look more like Victorian-y, which is mildly okay, that's, that yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean? Now, these ones yeah. here are going to be stacked. That's our modern twist. OK, so happy so far? Very nice. happy. OK, so Exciting. I will start working out things like quantities and all the other bits yep. and pieces that need to go on. Now we've nailed this, then yep. we'll choose a carpet that works with our tile. Mm -hmm. These aren't the cheapest in the world, but we have saved a little bit when we come to some of the other tiles. OK. You know, right. so it's about pick and choose. Yep. Yeah. But we want to do it right. It's a relief knowing we all agree on the overall colour scheme. And with Kelsey and Nathan making great progress, it won't be long before we need all of the supplies. And when we arrive at the house, Alex has received a quote from the power company for replacing the mains cable. It's $6,000. <laughs> That's like two more than what you were thinking. Yeah, which is a lot. So I've actually I've, I've called them and, and asked that. And then the guy, he said, I'll oh, have a look at the plan that's attached to the, to the invoice, which I hadn't seen. So Great. I opened the plan up and here's what we have. Power pole, mm -hmm. dig, dig, terminate there. That's the neighbours, not ours. So they've basically quoted for the completely the wrong job. <laughs> it's a six to eight week lead time on actually getting the work done. Taking them a week now to quote on the wrong job. <laughs> Alex and Rachel's renovation of their Hibiscus Coast home is proving costly. With the power company quoting $6,000 to replace their unsafe electricity mains cable to the front of their property. 
but they've also quoted for the wrong house and will need to come out again, which could cause a major delay in the build. So then you've got to dig a trench, of course, from here into the house. Yeah. Which has got to get the power all the way to the um, fuse board, no doubt. Yeah, and that's, that's basically halfway through the house. Right. Even if I dig the trench myself, it's the wire, the wiring, fuses, all this stuff that needs to happen, so more money. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, it could be another few thousand dollars, even if you dig it yeah. yourself. The total cost will be $8,000 and will have to come out of the contingency budget, which is less than ideal at such an early stage of the build, particularly if this 85-year-old cottage continues to throw us surprises. One of the biggest challenges has been just dealing with walls that are out of plumb, places out of level, floors, existing floors are out of level. There's been a couple of walls that we've, you know, when we've pulled them apart, they haven't been built that well or they're so far out that we've had to replace. Yeah, and then it's just trying not to do too much damage, you know, to the existing house downstairs, trying to keep everything, you know, we don't want to have to be coming back and fixing stuff up that's unnecessary. While Kelsey shops for timber, Alex heads out on his own shopping trip. The Perspex pergola at the back of the house desperately needs replacing. And of course, Alex wants the latest in high tech to replace it. All right, so what can we do for you? Well, I sent you those plans, so you've got a, an idea of what I want. Yep. And I'd just like to fine tune it now. Yep, no, we're excited. We've got a couple of great options for us to look at, so let's go outside and have a look. Firstly, we've got two options over here. First one we're looking at is the 200 Super Heavy. Yep. Um, this is designed for a, a big spanning area, big area. Mm -hmm. Thinking of my space, and you've, you've seen the plans, it actually feels like about that sort of size of space. Would I want to use this particular option or should I use something else? We're looking at a 200 Super Light here, which is very similar blade. Bonus is it's not such a high detail. Sure. Um, and it's obviously lighter, which is more cost effective. Yeah. Um, Coming through here, if we look at the Super Light and how it operates. Yep. Quick flick of a button and bang. Open she goes and in comes the light. Great. And uh, all the way? Yeah. With the remote, we can stop it anywhere we like to really let the sun in, Great. or carry it open all the way. If you add a rain sensor, yep. it'll automatically close as soon as it starts raining, things okay. like that. Okay. This is definitely the lead runner right. from, from my point of view. Sure. Um, but we do have a second option, which would be the 220 retract, which is brand new. Okay. So let's go have a look at that, eh? All right. So as you can see, very similar in look. Yep. Um, bigger spans, but this thing has something special, which is probably the best part about it. Aha! Uh -huh. Now that's very cool. I like that. It is cool, it's very cool. Yeah. And here you go, fully wow. open. Nothing in the way, nothing impeding the sunlight. As if it was never here. And this, you, you could use this in, in any design or in, in any limitations. I'm thinking about my place, where, where you've got this sort of angle. Would that work there? Um, well, this has to be square and, and parallel. That's probably the only flaw. Um, but other than that, yeah, we can make anything work, really. This is great. I want to look at some colour options, please, so I can choose one of these. No worries, let's go. Well, we all know I'll be picking the colour, Alex. I know we've narrowed it down to the super light. This is what you're looking at. Okay, so this is where, this is top. Yep. Sun and rain hits that, so the rain, because it's slightly angled, pours off down through the gully. Yep, and as you can yeah. see, um, each blade will have a lip that will overhang the next piece. Oh, I see, so it slots in. And therefore so... making it watertight. Yeah, got you. So next steps then, we'll get you to come and do a site visit, do a measure up. Yep. And look at some dates to actually start doing some work. No worries, too easy. I think the new Louvertech will look great in the garden. And I can only hope that Rachel and I will have the same success when choosing the carpet. While it might be some weeks away, choosing and ordering the carpet now means we'll get the design and style that we want. I love cup. Uh, I like it as a surface. It's uh, warm to stand on. Yes. Um, it's comfortable for you. Yeah. Uh, it's got sound deadening properties. Yeah. I mean, you can hear how quiet it is in here. Oh, it's lovely. It, it, it works really well 
Uh, and it's, it's quite a Kiwi thing to have the carpet down on the floor. Yeah. You've got timber surfaces through the main living areas, so that works really, really well, but it's yes. going to be nice to have some warm comfort in the hallways, bedrooms, um, in your front lounge. Yes, definitely. That, that, and that's that that's kind of room. Cozy. It's a snug kind of yeah. cosy room. So what I did was I grabbed a whole heap of um, greys. This one here off the bat acts that it's looking too green to me. I don't like that no. very much, so great. <laughs> Put it in the no okay, pile. No. <laughs> that's too light, yeah? That's too light. That's going to, yeah. I mean, we've got kids, kids' friends, dog, muddy paws. That's that's too light. It's out. Oh. OK, this is looking good. I like this. I, quite I like, like this. that too. What do we got? Let's flip it over. We have Studio Colour Luster. Luster. I like that one. Let's put that up on top there, shall okay. we? I like that a lot. Too flecky? Yeah. <laughs> Too flecky. It's gone. <laughs> you see, when you get a selection like this, it's really easy just to look at them because you know what you do and don't like, yep. right? That I like. I like this one too. Yeah? I really like this one. OK, yes. so we're down to two. Let's put them side by side. OK. So they kind of overlap a little bit like that. Oh, yeah, they're quite, they're quite I'm gonna similar, grab aren't they? I'm going to grab a tile. People forget sometimes that bathroom tile's butt up against. I love that you've brought it. I yes. would never, ever have thought to bring the it's, tile. It's why I have my baby carpet. basket <laughs> full of treasure. I prefer the one on it the is, left. It is, isn't it? It's this one. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's good. And I like it against the, the timber. I mean, your timber's lighter than this, but it, yes. it, it feels nice with the timber. Yeah. This will work well with your slate at your front entrance. So this is our uh, skirting colour, which sits fine with it all oh, as well. Oh, that's nice. So, there's something to think about too is underlays. So there are two main types that are used here. It's the Royal, so it's got an eight star comfort rating. It's 11 millimetres thick, and it's 105 kilogram underlay. So that's up to you guys for the cost. It's worth spending money on underlay, because you can get a lot yeah. more cost effective underlays than these. Okay. And um, you, you get a lot of bang for your buck for your 10, $15 you can spend extra on your underlay than you kind of get with your carpet. The carpet will really complement the tiles and wall colours while also suiting Alex and Rachel's hectic lifestyle. With so many design features now organised for the renovation, it means the supplies will be delivered on time and quantity surveyor James White comes out to the site for an update. He is keeping a strict eye on the budget and payments, so he needs to know straight away about any changes or delays. And overnight, Alex has had an update about the steel beams. Oh, so this is all changed up here? Oh, it's, it's quite huge when you think about it, yeah. In terms of progress and, and program, oh, how, are they, how are they tracking? There's been an issue with the steel, because that's all going to need to go in here for the supporting the new structure. That's right. Where the, the guy actually had a heart attack, oh, so sure. you know, he's OK. Yeah but that's obviously pushed us back because he's not doing that. So the builders have given you a program. Yep. Roughly how far behind are they? We're almost a week whilst you think, OK, there's a thing not happening right now because the steel should be in, or right. being, being welded at the moment. What it's actually meant is Kelsey is doing is the internals, which he'd be doing after the steel had gone in. Well, and I guess you'd get that benefit from the shrink wrap in, in doing that, don't yeah. you? Because it's all was essentially weather tight. It allows the program sort of factoring different areas at different times, if need be. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, no, without yeah. it, and yeah, you'd have an open roof, and what do you do? Alex and Rachel's renovation on the Hibiscus Coast has just suffered a major setback, with the steel beams indefinitely delayed. And quantity surveyor James White is on site with Alex and Kelsey to come up with a new plan and stay within budget. Small delay with the steel. Yeah. Um, the guy who's in charge runs that for us has had a heart attack. He's still working on it from home, fortunately, so probably put us about a week behind. Okay. on that side of things. So are you pretty confident that we'll catch up that time? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess we haven't really lost any time as such because we're still just working, you know, we're doing stuff that's got to be done anyway. I mean, oh. if the steel was coming next week, we might have gone in and we'd be up there now practically, it cutting it, you know, and leaving all this stuff, which yep. has still got to be done sooner or later, but possibly would have pushed on up there a bit, a bit quicker, but yeah. yeah. sure, OK. But as it is, I mean, in some ways, it's almost a better job because it'll, everything down here almost be complete, all tied down, then we're just working our way up. Landscaping's going to happen at some point. All through there, yeah. Tree gone. Kelsey's making good headway. 
it's fantastic that we've got the uh, scaffold and the shrink wrap up there because it's allowed him to sort of invert that program uh, when the steel didn't turn up for, for uh, frankly, really unfortunate circumstances. Uh, budget's looking good, progress is looking good. Um, look, forward to, look forward to coming back next month. With no set date for installing the beams, it's only a matter of time before Kelsey runs out of work. But for now, he can prepare the ground floor for their installation. There's about five or six total coming through. So there's a few different areas that are exactly the same thing. We're going to have to take the jib off. Um, and it's better to do it from the inside than the outside? Yep, most of them are on the inside. Down this end, we've got where the other end of this portal frame comes down, we will probably come from the outside, just so it's less disruption for you guys living here. In the newer part of the house, we're hoping, we're not sure on that wall yet, that they are 90 you know, by 45 framing. Mm -hmm. But I know where we are now, over by the stairwell, it's all 75. Because that's all old. Yeah, we're just hearing back whether we can just probably just end up putting a couple more studs in. Yep. And that'll be OK. We won't have to re rebuild your whole entire house at this stage. That'd be nice. <laughs> that's the plan. I'm on top of the kitchen right now, and from what Kelsey was just explaining, this is the corner that we were looking at in the kitchen where we're going to take off the jib. And inside that wall is where the steel beam is going to go all the way down through to the foundations, which are under the house, which is what they dug a couple of weeks ago. And that's going to hold up, along with another five or six of them around the house, it's going to hold up this big fat steel frame which is going to be the main supporting structure for everything that's going to get built on top of it. The plumber and electrician still need to clean up the cables and pipes upstairs. But without the steel beams, the ceiling is unsupported and beginning to give way. So Kelsey needs to urgently install wooden supports downstairs, and Alex should be on site to assist. But this weekend is the Rotorua Marathon, and he's already left Auckland. Tomorrow I'm doing the marathon, and upon reflection, probably should be actually on site at the 100-day renovation. Actually, to be fair, I'm kind of happy about that because I could do with a, a day where I'm not covered in dust. And I'm doing the race. So rather than renovating, I'm running 42 k's tomorrow, which hopefully means this isn't my last ever video that I make. And the distraction of a renovation seems to pay off for Alex, who completes the marathon in a personal best time. Four hours, 17. Can barely talk. <sighs> Did it. You're renovating. There's all this stuff to do, and all of a sudden it hits you. This is very full on. Plus, I've got to go to work to pay for renovating. <laughs> and I think it actually did me good to get away for, and just clear my head for a bit, really. But it's not long before he's back on site, demolishing the ensuite so Kelsey can replace the old and weak bathroom studs. Now that the, the run is over and I'm not training five days a week, I can be a bit more useful with Rach and the kids because at the moment Rach was basically, you know, single parent looking after the kids whilst I've been training and, and renovating. And hopefully I can spend a bit more time on them. With only 100 days and a limited budget, it's important that Alex now focuses on the renovation, and that means getting his hands dirty. Hard hat on. It's time for a bit of action. Alex and I are going to get stuck into a few little projects, and we're going to attempt to take down this pergola. We've got a limited amount of time to do it, and uh, I think there's a lot of work. But yeah, we'll have a crack. and just work our way down. At least they're not short shorts. I'll just knock these off. There's no point paying a builder who's got 20 years experience, you know, in, in their craft to rip jib off a wall, things like that. If I can do that myself, try and keep that uh, project rolling along so that these little jobs that need to happen, happen, and then they can come in and do what they're skilled at doing. I suppose stuff like that's going to help me keep that budget under control and keep time under control. It's great Alex is now fully focused on the renovation, 
particularly as he and Rachel will need to start ordering important supplies, like the roof tiles. We're not able to get the um, exact replacement. Well, what we've got is this one, which yeah. is the um, metro tile. And the difference between the two... There's not much to not it. A lot of, not a lot of difference, not at all. Yeah, and and colour-wise? Colour-wise, yep, we've got the colour. Oh, that's right. great, happy. Thank Lovely. you. thanks. Great. OK. See you in a few weeks, I guess. Yep, looking forward to it. I know, me too. <laughs> Imagine having a roof on your house. <laughs> and there's still the issue with the electricity mains cable. It will cost $8,000 to tunnel the cable from the road and under the house to the new metre board. And Alex needs to find a less expensive option. He's hoping Jim from the power company will be able to help. Well, because this, this is an existing installation, you don't have to go underground. Right. If, if, if you're worried about cost, um, it's, you can stay over here. So if it follows the same route... Oh, OK. Um, ..and goes up... But so it can go up? Yep. And also it can move out, because moving out's taking it away from other yeah. properties. Yeah. OK. So if we look at the plans... So there we can see the existing just above the front door there. And it's going straight up to and the... And it will just go straight up to the apex. Yep. Because it's existing power, then it's just a replacement. Yes, it's maintenance. Yep. I guess I'll leave you to measure and quote and do all, yep. whatever you need yep. to do, yep. and then you send that to me and we'll pay yep. it, because it's not going to be eight yep. grand. You should so. get your quote tomorrow or Monday. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, um, and it'll be a lot less than the underground <laughs> one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Timber for the second storey has arrived at Alex and Rachel's Hibiscus Coast renovation, meaning Kelsey can prepare the framing for upstairs. With no news on when the steel beams will arrive, timber supports have been added on the ground floor. Because we've cut through the timbers that are holding the ceiling up so they've lost all their strength, you know, they can just collapse, the whole ceiling would come down with the weight of it if we didn't prop it up. So yeah, so we've propped all the ceiling up. For Alex, there's at least good news about the electricity mains cable. The guy from Vector came this morning to look at the issue that we had where we were facing an $8,000 bill to bury the power cable and bring it into the house. What we've actually settled on now is replacing the existing cable that came in and is ancient, basically doing a like for like but going up onto the apex of the new part of the house so that takes that power cable out of the way of the front door, no issues, job done way cheaper, so happy about that. The cost of the mains cable will now be much lower, and Alex and I can spend the money on wiring the house, including remote controls and sensor lights. But I'm really here for the colour scheme. A couple of things I do want to do, I want to have a look at the black switch against the black tile. Cool, and Just you've brought along <laughs> colour samples oh, of all this stuff. I have. You have? <laughs> OK, let's start. Uh, black wall tile okay. so that's our black switch it's perfect great okay now i'm going to have the white so this is the main bathroom so we're using a slightly more glossy um beveled edge tile so where's the first of the whites for me to try that one there that's working incredibly well it's almost as if you know what you're doing i know Some, sometimes flukes occur in life <laughs> 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 right, okay, what have I got now? Wall colours, haven't I? So this is just straight resin alabaster. So I need a switch type for that. And I think our white is working again yeah. perfectly with that. So that takes care of that. No problem. And then this and is triple sea fog, which is the walls and the rest of the house. Right. Apart from the lounge. So I'm picking the grey. Mm. That I, is actually a good match, eh? I, I mm. think so. I think the white is too intense against it. Yeah. Maybe. Don't know. Can I have both of these so I can mm. trial them out? Mm, totally, absolutely, yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. a we should include Rachel moment coming on. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave that one to Rachel. At the house, Kelsey is removing jib plasterboard for where the steel beams will run down the side of the house and attach to the newly concreted footings, while his apprentice Nathan works on framing for the second floor. We've made it all ready for the beams, steel beams to come in. Then all the cutouts, so that's ready to install. Taking the ceiling out of here for the stairwell. The Sparky's been tidying up all the wiring. Plumber's come in, he's tidied up so we can get all the steel in. And yeah, we're just hoping that's going to arrive early next week. As soon as Alex is back on site, he's loading up the truck to dispose of the roof tiles. And he's had an idea about how to save himself money. Rather than 
frying all this old roof in the skip and it ending up in landfill, I'm taking it along to the scrap metal guy in Silverdale. If he gives me some money, great. I don't really mind about that because I can't imagine it's worth much, but it's more that it means I don't have half a skip load of old roof, which doesn't go into a landfill. Oh, I can see it now. <laughs> But first, he has to get the trailer on the scales. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's so much easier with a boat. Here we go. And it seems that the trip was worth the effort after all. There we go, $65. Work it. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's a triple win because I haven't filled up half of a skip with roof, which would cost me money because skips cost money. I haven't ended up with the roof going in landfill because it's gone in a skip. And aside from my appalling reversing of the trailer, I've got an extra win there because I got 65 bucks for all that old roof. So happy days. I'm sure we'll find something to spend that $65 on, Alex. Like the electrical wiring or the plumbing, which have to be rerouted and organized before the steel beams arrive. Sparky's here now and the power's off because the rewiring is happening for the existing part of the house. There's a lot of old cabling in here which is going and being replaced with new, which will bring it up to code. At the same time, the plumber's upstairs taking out pipes from old plumbing that doesn't exist anymore. Existing plumbing which just sort of went up into the ceiling didn't matter because it went into the ceiling. That needs to be moved so that the new floor can go down. So it's a busy day, all these things are happening. Uh, we also lost our internet today, which is tricky because we're trying to also work and live in the house. That's probably two days away from being fixed now. And more mess. With no electricity or internet for the rest of the day, it seems like a good time to go shopping. And Rachel and Alex head out to the lighting store. With Rachel still recovering from spinal surgery, she's researched everything online, but wants to see them in person before ordering. This, I've seen this online, I think it's lovely. You know, over our dining room table, yeah. the three pendants that we have always tried to replace and could never find anything that we liked. I really love this, and I know Hamish likes it too. Awesome. Is, this is cool, I like it. One down. Easy. <laughs> What's next? Okay, um, me and Hamish had seen this online and thought it would be awesome for Max's bedroom. Oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, with the bold colors on his wall, it would really stand out. Great. Well, this is easy. <laughs> Well, it is for you. <laughs> You're just rocking up and agreeing. We've got some bedside lamps okay. that we've seen. And now, these are very cool. Which one? Well... All of them? <laughs> all of them, no. <laughs> um, three beds, three lamps. So they're one stage on and off, which means you don't have to fiddle for the cord when you're wanting to turn them on. So it's really good when, uh, yeah, just lean over and touch them to turn them on. For Macy's room? Oh, that's really nice. Like mint. Yeah. No excuse for the kids not to do the homework. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the lights set up. I for see it. what that's you've great. done there. Yeah. yeah see. Yeah. Clever. All right. We've seen these downlights online. Okay. Cool. Downlights. Um, that way. So uh, that'll be this one here. That yes, that's right. We also had directional downlights on the list. So they are the gyro 8 watts. Cool feature about these guys is they have a 360 degree tilt. Um, so that basically allows you to tilt it any which way. So these are going to be the reading lights above our bed. So right. we can actually read in bed with a really good clear light. See, Alex is getting older, so he does need... <laughs> he needs a really good reading light. Rude. <laughs> And while I wanted a more modern light for the okay. front door, yeah. Rachel's heart is set on a more traditional look. Now that's perfect for the, the look of the house and the entranceway. That's that's what we need. Exactly definitely. right. Yeah. And Alex has his own ideas about the outdoor areas and bathrooms. This is one of my my pet things that I really like, and it's LED lighting, which will actually be under the vanities. These guys around here are actually very flexible, so you can cut them to length. So it can either be hardwired or plugged straight into your wall. And uh, if you do end up seeing those LEDs and want to dim them down a little bit, uh, you can recess them into a channel, which will basically just provide a diffused light. Researching online is just part and parcel of what everyone does now. And with Rachel not being as mobile sometimes, she's really taken this, um, to the, taken full advantage of it, basically. 
So you can go online, you can see what the range is, you can take all of the legwork out of it because then it's, okay, that's what I want to look at. Right, so it might be one day on the road where you can go to three places. Even a dinosaur like myself from time to time manages to go online and find something and uh, yeah, it cuts down on the legwork, which, you know, is good. Plus it's fun. Who doesn't like sitting there scrolling through light fittings and couches and carpets and paints? It's very exciting. Work on Alex and Rachel's Hibiscus Coast renovation has begun to slow down. With no date still set for the arrival of the steel beams that will support the second story, and work may have to halt on the house. Well, it'd be good to be on up there now, powering on with that. We're sort of starting to get a little bit, a bit of it, you know, it'd be quite good to have that here. There's a little bit to sort of do under the house, but I'm not too worried about that at this stage. But we'll go down there if we have to. We'll start cutting all the frame for upstairs. So that'll be underway. So once the steel's in, then we're just, you know, we've already cut all that. For the family, living in a demolition site is starting to hit home. So the house is a genuine building site at the moment, but of course we're still living here, so we still have to carry on with day-to-day -day life. I'm just icing a cake for the kids afternoon tea and it's not the easiest with pillars blocking half the kitchen cupboards but you know that's life Watch your step. but with Rachel's ongoing okay. back issues so, moving around the renovation is becoming difficult this <laughs> is our um, well it was a quite nice cozy lounge it's now less inviting and so we've got a lot of these supporting uh, pillars here which I imagine are to stop the ceiling caving in. Squeeze through here past the uh, building site and into where Max sleeps which just watch your step again <laughs> looks like this now but he's a good boy and he hasn't complained once in fact it's probably a typical 13 year old in that he's barely noticed anything's changed. <laughs> and our bathroom, which if there's not insulation falling through the ceiling, um, this, this is how our bath is. Thank goodness that we are shower people. We actually rarely have baths, we have showers, but it's okay. I'm surprisingly still laughing and um, I'm okay with it for now. I was under the impression that there would be minimal disruption to the original part of the house and most of the work would be upstairs. But here we are and basically there's no walls left. As part of the structure to support the upstairs new addition, this is the wooden version of that supporting structure which goes down and is bolted through to the new foundations underneath and that's all part of that engineering which is going to hold up the new addition which is going on top of the house. With the renovation at a critical point, it's a good time for Alex to visit James White to discuss the first set of invoices he's just received. Builder's invoice? Yeah. We probably need a little bit more detail uh, behind this because I've noticed a couple of things that are different to what was presented originally. Hugely different? Not hugely different, but look, I like to have it nice and clean and, yeah. and, and tidy, and it would be good to know if there has been a rates increase since this estimate was yeah. provided and it's been reflected in there, that'd be fine. Yeah. But if not, I'll be asking them to hold the original price. So look, not much uh, to report budget-wise. Um, unsurprisingly, we're, we're under budget. It is early days, but um, we hope to keep it that way. Reasonably relaxed at this stage, but there's just a little bit of me now mm. that's thinking, stay in control because it's starting to look like a building site. Absolutely. And it's starting to look like it's going to cost money. Again, it comes back down to, I don't want to get to the end of the process. Everything gets added up and ooh. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 that won't happen. We'll be, we'll be there beside you. Great. <laughs> to finish preparing the house for the steel beams, Kelsey needs everything removed from the lounge. And I can't resist a bit of DIY. Destroy it yourself. OK, so I'm going to time us, because I reckon it's going to take us an hour. So I see two hours, you see one hour. Let's go. OK, start, go. This is going to go in the garage, this thing. This is going straight to the skip. Nice. It's like a glove. 13 minutes so far. I really should have made a bet on this. Should we store it in my dressing room? <sighs> 
and this old cottage keeps surprising us. Oh, lino. This old lino. Oh my god. This was not the lounge. This was a bedroom at one point, and it may have been the kitchen. So when you're pulling up carpet, an easy tip is metre wide, roughly strips, easier to get out through doors. Roll it up, store it somewhere dry. A simple reason, if you put it somewhere wet, it's going to fill up with water. I'm going to check my timer. 31 minutes. We're going great. I'm going to take the Scotia down. Now the key to getting it off easy is finding the start point. This piece overlaps this piece. So if I pop this bit, it'll come out cleanly. If I try to do the other bit, it'll be jammed behind it. I mean, two people do the job so much quicker, and we're kind of, well, kind of done, really. One hour, three minutes. Stop. Nailed it. While we cover up everything in the room, Kelsey is right behind us, cutting a hole in the jib plasterboard for where the steel beam will be inserted and attached to the footings. And Dean, the electrician, is installing the new meter board for upstairs which is a perfect time for Rob to arrive with Alex and Rachel's new automated electrical system. As a qualified electrician, you'll find this really easy to use. It's a great product as far as uh, what the electrician does in the background. If you flip that over, you can see that it's a real simple oh, yeah. three cable connection. Yeah. It's not multiple cables and having yeah. to twist wires yeah, and make yeah, things yeah. work. Pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, so Space. what we're also going to include in this project as well too is a form of automation. So the flush boxes that the electrician installs these days generally have got a very big open back on them. Yeah. So where you have some uh, electronics that needs to be inside the wall, yeah. um, you really want something with a little bit of space because exactly. you don't want a lot of yeah. wiring being all tucked in there nice yeah. and tight, yeah. it just causes issues. Got so how big is that mechanism that goes in the back of here? She's a tiny little beastie. So that is a Nero automation controller. Yeah. So that will basically wire into the back of the light switch. Yeah. Um, this gives us full automated control of that lighting circuit, if you like. So yep. uh, we'll put a number of these around the house. Yep. Um, that will also give us the ability to control everything from a smartphone or a tablet or what have you. Pretty much anywhere in the world, as long as you've got an internet connection, you're connected yep. to your house. If you're going to go through the whole house, yeah and just pull the old flush boxes out and I'll put new ones in. Yeah. Yep. And then yep. if you want to change to all this through the whole house, we can. Okay. Also included in the system is a little sensor unit. All right. The cool thing about that is that it's not only just a motion sensor. That little unit can do a number of things. So that will do motion. So mm. walk past it and the lights yeah. come on. Um, but it also detects and transmits readings on humidity, temperature, light levels, All right. vibration and UV. It's yeah. not wired to anything in particular. You program it to turn on this light, that light, okay. that light. Um, same with humidity too. So you can say, right, at 80% humidity, I want this to turn the fan on. Simple, eh? Great. Love it. With Dean on board, Alex can go ahead with his grand plans for remote-controlled switches throughout the house. But while he's been busy with Rob and Dean, the building site has fallen silent, and that can mean only one thing. So it's just gone 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Kelsey and the builders just came to see me 10 minutes ago and said, hey, we're going home because there's nothing more we can do on the site until the steel arrives. Luckily, 10 minutes before that, we got the green light, the steel will arrive tomorrow. So without it, we'd be held up on the project and nothing would be happening. Fortunately, we're held up for maybe two hours tops. I can live with that. That's fine. The steel's on the way tomorrow. So it's all on again tomorrow in the morning and we move to a next stage where we can start looking at building that second story. Next week, the steel beams arrive. The next week is going to be the hardest part of the whole job, really. And the renovation hangs in the balance. For something so bulky and so strong, it's just a little moment of precision. And the wiring once again causes issues. This red one's a split and breaking yeah, that's down. That's what it's like inside there. Biting into Alex's plans. I think it's mostly time. 